Hey guys, just going to finish the book of Philippians today, chapter 4. Just going to dive right into the word. I apologize ahead of time if you hear anything in the background. I have my dog with me. So, yeah, if you want to just grab the word and read along with me, it's just going to finish up chapter 4, book of Philippians today. So, just diving right in. Verse 1 says, Therefore, my beloved and long for brethren, my joy, my crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. I implore Yodia and I implore Sintai to be the same mind in the Lord. Because to remember it's that Christ-like mindset. But to each have the same mind, not different minds. Because there's only being a new creation, a new creature in Christ. Having that new Christ-like mindset, Christ-like heart, Christ-like way that you live. You're having the same it's all thinking alike, having the same mindset as the body of Christ, as that Christ-like mindset. Verse 3, it says, And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labor with me in the gospel, workers of Clement, also the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Always rejoice, Paul says here. Always. Don't let anybody take that away from you. They can't. What can they do? Does it matter the hardships, the tribulations? Paul says to rejoice in it. Persecutions. The disciples didn't even count themselves worthy of being persecuted in the name of Christ. Every little thing. Give thanks to the Lord in all things, but rejoice always. So don't let anybody take that away from you. Remember, they can never do that. They can never take away your soul. They can never take away the joy that Christ has given you. Remember to ask him to fill you up. Fill you up with the cup of joy. Verse 5, it says, Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. So let them understand that. It's the works, the fruit, the serving. Let your actions be seen for you. Because anybody can just say anything. It's how you're treating men. How you're acting around men. The true actions of your life being changed. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So in everything, in good things, in hardships, in times of need, it doesn't matter. Always giving thanksgiving, always getting in prayer, and let your requests be made, known, be made known to God. And it says, be anxious for nothing, because He's the Father of mercy, the Father of, of love. And First Peter chapter 5, verse 7, He says, cast your anxieties upon Him, because He cares for us. Anxiety transfers over to depression, to fear, because it's what He gives us. He changed that and gives us not a spirit of fear takes away our anxiety from us because he loves us so much and he'll help us overcome that. He'll give us the strength. So in doing so, always in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving and giving your requests to God, letting let him be known. And seven, it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Because it's true peace. He's the king of peace, the king of glory. Om only those who have Christ have true peace and actually feel that true peace to actually feel it in your life, feel it in your heart and the things that you do. You can only get that by Christ. And it, Paul says here, it surpasses all understanding because one out there could truly understand Christ, could know about Christ. But if they don't have Christ living inside of them, they don't have true peace. And to feel that actual peace, to have Christ living inside of you, the actual life of God living in you, it surpasses all the understanding but will guard your hearts through Christ. God will guard your heart because it's the peace of God that lives inside of you. Verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and praiseworthy, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Get alone with God. Get into prayer. Meditate on these things. If there's anything noble, pure, of good report, lovely, virtue, get in with God. Get in with prayer. Get in a long time with Him and meditate on Him. Just get in the, get in alone with Him and let your spirit, let your mind be with Him alone and meditate on these things. Giving thanks to Him constantly. Rejoicing constantly. Verse 9, it says, These things which you've learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And God of peace will be with you. Verse 10 says, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, and now that at last you care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but are lacked but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard of need, for I have learned at whatever state I am to be content. I know 
how to be abased and I know how to be abound. Everywhere in all these things have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to be abound and to suffer in need. Because it's the flesh, living in spirit and living in flesh. It doesn't matter if you're hungry, you're full in God. It doesn't matter if you're weak in the spirit, if you're weak in flesh, you're strong in the spirit of God. It doesn't matter if you might have pain in the body, you're still strong and you have joy in the spirit of God. Because until we're with him, until we're right standing with him and made perfect in his righteousness, we're going to have to fight the flesh constantly. And, uh, you know, even though we go through these things and we might suffer these things, Paul is saying, whether he's hungry, he's also full. And whether he needs to suffer, he's also abound and free. Verse 13, it says, I can, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, not some, all. And it's to have faith, to live in faith. To go by faith in Christ, knowing that no matter what, knowing that you'll be able to, he'll be able to move mountains through you, knowing that it's already going to be done because it's a faith in him and you can do all things through him because he's the one who strengthens us. Notice that too. A lot of people take out the, um, I can do all things through Christ. I myself am guilty of this, but I forget to leave out the strengthens me. Remember, he strengthens you constantly disciplining you, molding you, shaping you, building you up. And then that's that walk. You gradually uh, go through the tribulations that you go through are starting to become easier and easier and easier because you're building up into the one who strengthens you. Verse 14, it says, Nevertheless, you have done well what you have shared in my distress. Now you Philippians know that also in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but only you. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once again for my necessities. Because the church does, they do that for it's a brotherly love, the, the body of Christ. Understanding the, the aids, the needs for the brothers and sisters. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Because the gift comes with it. We already have the gift. The gift is eternal life, salvation. The gift is Christ. Because Paul already has the gift. He already has salvation, but he's seeking the truth. And that's why he's writing to them. Because it's to understand it's the works, it's the ways, it's the getting the message out, the gospel out to the people, the world, the Gentiles. And, and to understand that it's the, it's the fruit, the actions, the gentleness, uh, sending, giving needs and necessities to the brothers and sisters. Paul says in verse 18, Indeed, I have all in them abound, I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the thing sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. Verse 19 says, And my God shall supply you, shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in the, and by Christ Jesus. Will supply all your needs. Not some of them, all of them. He's, and that's why Christ, when he says, you look at the sparrows of the air, they don't reap, they don't store up in barns, and yet their heavenly Father takes care of them. How much more valuable are you than they? He came off his throne and died for us, giving his life for us, separating from the Father for us, so that we wouldn't have to be separated from the Father. He says that all of your hairs are numbered, and he has more thoughts for you than grains of sand. Telling you to cast all your anxieties upon you, the one who will never leave you, never forsake you. So, to know... It says, God will sh shall supply all your needs according to his riches in his glory. Because it's, it's, it's his for his glory, his riches. And he, he loves us. That's the, his, we're his children. You think he's going to just not take care of his children? No, he's a wonderful, amazing, holy, awesome God that takes care and loves his children. But to understand... We have to become his children first. Most people already know that. That's why Christ said in John 3, 3, we must be reborn. Because being born into Adam, we're born into trespasses, born into sin, born in that natural way. That's why we all naturally go against God. But once we're reborn, we're born into the spirit, born by the spirit of adoption. So now that we're sons and daughters of God, God is our father. He lives inside us. He's going to supply all of our needs. But most of you already know that. Verse 20, it says, Now our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus, the brethren who you who are with me, greet you. All the saints greet you, but especially those who are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. So that was Philippians chapter 4, so powerful. The book of Philippians is so amazing. Even though it's, it's only four chapters, there's so much to take out of it. It's just rejoicing in the Spirit. 
no matter the hardships or tribulations, knowing that God's with us, He'll always be with us, strengthening us. We can do all things through Him, being with one another in brotherly love. So there's just so much to take out of the book of Philippians. I love it so much. So now that we're finished with Philippians, I don't know exactly where we're going to jump into. I know it could possibly be Peter, Acts. I might do the book of Lamentations. Could might be Daniel. I'm honestly just going to sit and pray on it throughout the night, in the morning, really get with God, meditate in with it, and just let Him decide like always because the Word's alive. It always speaks to us. It always speaks and has to go in accordance with what we're going through in, in life. We, No matter where we're at in life, no matter what God puts on our heart, the Word of God will always speak to us in that specific moment in time. So I just step back and let Him take, take the wheel and just whatever book that He wants us to dive right into, we'll just do that next. So Thank you guys for reading with me and I hope you'll be with me tomorrow. God bless you guys.